Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Jay, and this is a devotional time. Well, I hope that you had a, a wonderful and, and blessed weekend at your respected uh, churches this uh, this past Sunday. Uh, I know that out at LFBC, we had an awesome and wonderful time. The Holy Spirit was absolutely in full force. Uh, we spoke on trials yesterday morning. Uh, as James would uh, tell us that trials, we should, we should look at them as joy. Um, and we talked about the trials, how we how the trials that, that, that we have in life are either fell into, accidental trials, but most of the time they're walked into, which is uh, uh, something that's more deliberate and that we cause ourselves. And it was just, uh, it was phenomenal uh, to see uh, the spirit work in the congregation as the people came down. And uh, we see that that, uh, that people are going through trials in life right now. People are, are having uh, having problems in life and and uh, they, they want to see the Lord work in their lives, and sometimes they're not sure how to go about doing that. Where well, God tells us that if we call on Him, we'll ask that He will uh, give us wisdom liberally. And so we talked about that. And then last night we we got into talking about a little something about that uh, when we're living for God, that all these trials and these problems will work out for the glory of God uh, for those who love God. And and so we started talking about that, and that's what I want to look at this morning. But I want to take a little different look at it from the book of Galatians. Before we do, let us pray. The gracious Heavenly Father, God, we love you and we honor you, Father. We thank you so much, Lord, uh, for all that you do, Lord God. Thank you for the wonderful and awesome weekend we had out at Leonard's Fork. And, and Lord, we just uh, lift you up. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, in Galatians 2.20, this has quickly become my life verse or one of my life verses. Um, and it says, uh, I am crucified with Christ, but nevertheless I live. But not I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. And then it goes on to say that it says, And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, hallelujah and praise God. So my question today is, uh, dear ones, who are you living for? Who are you living for? Who, who, who are, are you getting up every morning for? Because that's going to uh, ultimately determine your trials in life. You know, we tend to, when we, when we live for the Lord fully, we tend to have better discernment and we tend to walk into less trials. Now, trials are going to happen because of the fall of, of man with Adam and Eve. But we can see trials come our way accidentally or we can fall into them, but we don't have to always walk into them when we're using discernment that the Lord would give us. So, so how are we living our lives each day? Well, as it says, it says, I am crucified with Christ, but nevertheless, I live. So, so each day is saying that, that we are crucified with Christ. We died with Christ, but it seems that nevertheless, we live. We still have our fleshly bodies. We still uh, wake up here on this earth each and every day. So, so why is it? If I have died with Christ, but nevertheless I live, why is it that I live? Well, I live for Christ. Nevertheless I live, but not I that live, but Christ that liveth in me or through me. So each and every day when we wake up out, out of bed or, or when, when we go off to work or to school or to play, that our entire being should be about living for Christ, living for Jesus Christ. And so if we're living for ourselves, if we're living for our promotion or living for our job or living for our children or living for our uh, spouse, we're living for the wrong thing. Christ says that if you're in him, if you have been crucified in him, crucified with him, you're still a fleshly person. You still live, but it's not you that's alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not you that live, but Christ that liveth in you. And by the faith, it says, by your faith in the life which you now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. You know, the book of 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, if a man does not work, a man should not eat. And so I was telling the congregation last night that, you know, people say, well, what about my job? I, I have to do my job. I have to do this. I, yes, you do. Because God give it to you. God give you that job. What's your job in this earth once you're born again is to serve Jesus Christ 100% from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Why is that? Because you're God's. You're Christ. You were crucified with Christ, but nevertheless you live, but not you that live, but Christ that liveth through you. So if you have a great job, wonderful. God gave it to you. Why did he give it to you? So you can eat. 
Why does he say that? The word of God says, if a man does not work, a man does not eat. And if a man does not eat, he does not have the energy, hallelujah, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, hallelujah and praise God. Well, there again, my name is Reverend Jay Warlock and I'm the pastor at Leonard Fork Baptist Church. If you do not have a home church, why don't you come out to LFBC? I know that you'll be happy to see what Jesus Christ is doing there. Have a great day. Come visit us at www.leonardsfork.org and God bless you today.